Hi, everyone. We had another great show this week on our Tuesday night podcast. Lots and lots of you had so many questions this week, and we're going to get some of those answered right now. Yes, and we now know that the Fed didn't pivot this week like uh, many people had expected with all the bank calamities going on. Uh, there was talk that the Fed, Jay Powell, in the latest FOMC meeting would uh, either not raise rates at all or actually go backwards. So with everything currently going on financial wise, we got the job market, we have the banks, we have the FHA modification of their loans. We have a lot of questions from our viewers. We have one right here. I don't understand what's going on. If things are so bad, why is the market up? Why are my homes and my market in Michigan being sold in less than two weeks at high rates and already inflated prices? So we know that inventory has been low pretty much across the whole country. Uh, but we do have this week the latest data from the National Association of Realtors. And again, you know, a lot of it is backward looking data. Um, so the numbers for February are now in. And um, we did see an uptick in business in January. And then it started to go back down again in February. And I think rolling into March for the first three weeks, inventory is not what we typically see for spring. It's way down, uh, but the market is moving and prices are less across a lot of the different markets. So, you know, real estate is very market specific, depending exactly where you're talking about, but uh, we break it down into four regions. So the Northeast, uh, the February numbers, sales have gone up from January to February uh, in the Northeast, but the actual median price of houses are down four and a half percent from the previous year. The Midwest is where we're seeing the biggest movement, okay? Um, and a lot of this is because that's the most affordable housing in America right now, right? The Midwest. So we watched sales grow from January to February at about 13 and a half percent, and prices are up five percent from 2022, same exact time. February of last year. Now the South uh, definitely rebounded from January to February. So we saw a 15.9% increase in sales. And also the South saw a 2.7% uh, price increase on average from last year. And a lot of that is because we have tons of domestic migration happening in the South. And job numbers are up too. Job growth is really strong in areas like Florida. And in the West, you know, we watched existing home prices from January to February skyrocket 19.4%. However, they have a reduction of home prices from a year ago. They're down about 5.6%. So yes, you may be looking at your area saying that prices are up, uh, but it's very market specific. I can assure you we are seeing major price declines in many markets, especially the high-end housing. Uh, and now with the Fed raising rates another quarter of a point, that should affect mortgage rates as well. And the pressure will continue. Uh, the downward pricing pressure will continue for these sellers. Todd, one of our viewers made a statement. My realtor keeps telling me this is a great time to buy. With all of this backward looking data, what are your thoughts on that? You know, I think it's all based on your affordability, you know, what, what you can afford and how long you're going to stay in the home. And I said that pretty much consistently since last April. You know, if you're buying a house right now uh, because you need to, uh, or you find something that really checks the boxes and you're planning on staying in there seven to 10 years hopefully you'll be okay. I'm not saying that you're going to be great. Nobody knows, right? Uh, but in order to sell a house, should you need to move, you have to have about 10% equity in the house from when you bought it to come out without, you know, paying money out of pocket or losing money. Uh, you know, so you've got to pay for realtor fees, transfer recordation cost, things like that. Typically, it's you're looking for at least 10% equity in order to sell. You know, and another thing that if you're buying right now, guys, you just have to be prepared that if we see another 5% decline, so let's just say it's a $400,000 house and we experience in the next couple of months, another five or so percent decline, you know, are you going to be okay? Will you feel all right if you lose quickly 20 or $30,000 in that $400,000 home? Let's talk about those buyers that bought this year. We had a question come in. When do you think the buyers of 2023 will be able to refinance their current loan rates? 
I don't think we're going to see mortgages get down much below six and a half percent again, uh, maybe for quite some time. You would have to check with your lender, but there are fees associated with refinancing. And a lot of times it's just not worth it. You have to stay in your house for a very long time in order to realize any you know upside benefit. Um, it's certainly a lot of benefit for the lender. They would love for you to refinance and then have an opportunity to get the commission for that. Uh, but you know, practically, you have to look at those costs that are associated and determine over the long term of your stay, are those costs with the amount that it actually reduces your payment, is it worth it? And for a lot of people, the answer is no. Uh, but I would say, you know, Will we see rates come down? Guys, I think we are in for, you know, a prolonged period of interest rates that should get into the eights. I think a 30-year mortgage rate, I think it's very practical that we will see eights or higher by the end of this year. We did see mortgage rates recede a little bit over, you know, I guess the last couple of weeks. Uh, I think it's back up to about 6.75% at this recording. Um, you know, but I think we're going to see over sevens here again in the next week, week and a half, two weeks ahead. And I think it's not finished yet. So if you bought a home in the last year, and let's just say you're in the five and a half to six and a half percent, <laughs> you may not be able to refinance. Uh, it just may not make sense for the longevity that you're in the house if it's less than 10 years. Not all buyers are going to need a loan. Some of these buyers are cash buyers. We did have one of our viewers say, looking to buy with cash, want to put in lower end offers. What's the best approach to strike a deal? You know, Melissa, something that I found quite alarming in the February data from the National Association of Realtors was in February, 28% of total home sales were cash buyers. And that's up from the 25% of cash buyers in February of 2022. So what this is telling me is that, you know, there's still a lot of cash in the marketplace, number one. And number two, it's telling me that there are still a lot of investors that are buying real estate competing with home buyers. You know, and this is all coming out prior to the collapse of SVB and really the uncertainty in the banking industry as far as even with regional banks, as we know that billions of dollars, you know, when SVB collapsed, went into larger banks, stripping regional banks of their deposits. And, you know, so I think that the cash buyers are actually going to go up from there because I think as people are worried about their money sitting in the bank, especially for anything over the insured limit of $250,000, should the FDIC not guarantee over 250, there may be a lot of people at risk of losing a lot. And Melissa, we know that there are a fair amount of buyers out there right now that sold their house last year and they're waiting for the market to come down. So their cash is just sitting there and you know many people are thinking that it's risky, right? It's it's at risk being in a bank account. So I think that we might see people pulling the trigger, you know, buying things now, paying cash, and that might actually keep prices elevated. Uh we'll know once we see these March and April numbers come out. So now to really address the question, you know, what should you do if you're a cash buyer? Should you try and strike a deal? I think what we found in the latest report from NAR is that houses on average that sat on the market for more than 120 days experienced about a 13% price reduction to actually entice a buyer to make a purchase. That's really what it comes down to. You know, if you want a deal right now, you need to look at two factors, right? Number one, how long has the house been on the market? And number two, how much work does it need? Um, you know, and can you get sweat equity by coming in low, uh, you know, where another buyer may not be able to do so, they can't buy it because if they need a loan, it would have to pass certain safety inspections if it's FHA or VA. Um, so a lot of these homes that are sitting on the market, they're distressed. You can capitalize on it as a cash buyer, but you would need to be prepared to do repairs. So as we know, there's a lot of these buyers sitting on the sidelines and they're going to want to do some preliminary research themselves. We did have a question come in. May you go over the basic steps for a good market analysis looking to do one for my city? 
And this is a great question. So if you're looking to buy a house or sell a house, really, and you're trying to establish a price um, on your own without the use of an agent, uh, which you can surely do, um, you just want to make sure that you're looking in the same subdivision of where you're looking to buy or sell. So a lot of people make this mistake. They will take an address and they will draw a radius around that property. Maybe they'll go out a mile or two or something like that. And then they look at the houses that have closed in the last six months and they try and do the comparison to, you know, what does this house have over the one that sold or what is it missing um, based on the one that sold. And that's where you really start to do your adding and subtracting, what's the lot size, things like that. What I caution you on is drawing the radius because if an appraiser is looking at the property, they want two houses that have sold within the last six months in the same subdivision. So when we cross over major streets or we enter into different neighborhoods, depending on where you live, if it's more rural or more city, it's going to really change drastically uh, by just drawing, you know, a circle around the property from neighborhood to neighborhood. And, you know, and what I'm going to tell you too, in a declining market, because that's what we've seen, we've seen 12 months of declining sales. We have seen prices decline nationally. Uh, we have seen where February, we're actually into the negative year over year average median price. We haven't seen that since the 2008 crisis. Uh, so this is a big deal. So what you really want to be paying attention to now is what has sold in the last several months, you know, one or two, three months. I don't even like looking at data from six months ago because the market has changed that much. And to cap it off, you know, um, we're just talking about price declines. You may be in one of those markets across the country that has seen price increases in the last three months. So when it gets down to the nuts and bolts of the contract, we have a lot of questions coming in, especially in regards to what as is means. One of our viewers had a question for you, Todd. Can you talk about an as is contract and what that means? Are sellers required to cover any costs or sign addendums to as is for contracts? For context, this viewer is talking about Florida. So I am, I'm not a Florida real estate broker. I'm a Maryland real estate broker, but I can tell you typically what as is means uh, because Maryland just changed their uh, Maryland contract basically to say that all contracts are as is. It's basically what does it say in it, right? It's as per the contract terms. So we eliminated the as is clause with the exception. Now we have an addendum that kind of excludes things in the contract. For example, now our addendum says that should a buyer be okay with the junk or the trash or belongings, personal belongings that are in the house and it doesn't need to be broom swept upon settlement. Um, so there's actually an addendum where that could be removed from the contract. And then also in the contract of sale, it talks about there being no, you know, violations or fines or things like that that are attached to the property. And then in this addendum now, um, the buyer can choose to waive that and take risks of any fines, property fines and things like that. Let's say they you know, had a violation for not cutting the grass or whatever, that the buyer would assume those fees. Um, but really, as is means exactly what it says. You're buying it as is. Now, that doesn't mean that you do no inspections. So you may decide that you're going to buy the house as is under its current conditions. And now it's going to come down to when you do an inspection, is it going to be an as is inspection where you're not going to ask for anything and you can simply walk away? Or is it going to be, you know, negotiating with the seller despite what your contract says uh, to have them fix repairs? Every state is different in this, regardless of where you live, guys. I'm telling you, get a home inspection. And I have videos on this. You're welcome to check it out in our channel. Just hit the little search, you know, on our Sax Realty channel, and you're going to see a couple of videos pop up. It is important not just to hire an inspector, but a good inspector because these inspectors, some of them, it's a joke. They have these loopholes 
in their agreements that they sign with you would basically states they can miss things and it's very hard to hold them liable. So buyer beware. So, you know, we were just talking about existing homes and buying one, but this viewer had a question, which is, you know, on the other end. Do you guys think building on your own land will be cheaper than buying? Building a home can be completely disastrous for the average home buyer. Okay. And, you know, there's a lot of moving parts to this. Now, I will say, you know, if you have a lot and, you know, it makes sense to do so. Once you do your cost analysis, uh, then sure. I mean, you're going to get a brand new house and you can pick and choose exactly what you want and not be stuck with what somebody else wanted, right? And uh, and then needing to make repairs from there or adjustments and modifications. But I'm going to tell you, if you have no experience in building a home, this is scary. I know a situation right now with a home builder that uh, the homeowner has just moved in and is now being served with papers because they are getting mechanic liens put on the property because the builder did not pay the bill, right? So this is a risky part about hiring a home builder is that if they don't pay their bills, they will come after you, the contractors will come after you and attach the property and you'll pay double for the house. But more importantly, it's very stressful buying a home. Uh, most people under budget for that. Uh, so there is a lot to say about just buying an existing home. Or if you really want new home construction, now is probably a really good time to negotiate some deals, depending on where you live with uh, new home builders. So there you have it, guys. So many quality questions, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to answer them. And if you found value in today's video, you can let Melissa and I know that you did by smashing that thumbs up. And as always, guys, don't keep this information all to yourselves. Share it with your friends. And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to our channel and hit the alert bell. You'll know every time we upload content just like this. And keep those comments and questions coming. We love reading them and we love responding to them. See you next time. See you next time. Sachs Realty, Maryland Broker, number 607720, office number 443-318-4514, equal housing opportunity.